I may have injured my shoulder dancing. That's okay. I'm old. That's what old is being like, Lana. Hey, book clubbers. Welcome to another week of fun reading with the Malazan Book of the Fallen. I'm Jeff Kanata, and I'm here with Lana Bashinsky. Hi, Lana. Hello, reporting in from the not that great white north. It's pretty mild here, but up in Canada in my sister's place. Um, and we had a little bit of a mic fiasco this morning, but we're in it. I'm ready to talk about books. Yeah, I'm very excited. Happy holidays to all of you that are watching this around when we're recording it, which is uh, very close to Christmas time here in the United States and around the world. And uh, we have a wonderful uh, Christmas themed topic uh, for those that celebrate. Happy holidays, whatever holiday you're celebrating or whenever you happen to be watching this. If you're not watching it, Uh, When we record it, I'm very excited to talk about chapters seven and eight of the fourth book in the tale of the Malazan Book of the Fallen series by Stephen Erickson, House of Chains. Uh, Really excited to dig into those, but we always start the show with a non-spoiler topic. And I want to tell you, Lana, about something that I just found out about this year, but my wife and I have decided to start as a tradition. And Ooh. evidently, it is a longstanding tradition around the world. It started in Iceland. I'm wondering if you've heard of, I'm going to mess this up, <laughs> Yola Boca Flood? You know, it doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> Yola Boca Flood. Uh, this is an Icelandic tradition that just sounds delightful. And uh, this is the first year my wife discovered it on, in some way on the internet somehow. And, um, and we're going to start doing it. And we're trying to spread the word to our family and make this like an extended family tradition as well. Evidently, this originated around World War II mm-hmm. uh, when um, many things were in short supply. But one of the things that was not in short supply was paper. And so this uh, tradition started that on Christmas Eve, uh, and and still, I guess, persists today and is quite popular in Iceland today. So Icelanders will gift each other a book on Christmas Eve, and they have a very specific way of wrapping the book. And they gift the book with a piece of high-end chocolate. Mm. So it's a book and a chocolate, and they're wrapped in a very specific way and everybody gets a book and a chocolate and then everybody reads and uh, drops their chocolate into their mug uh, of hot water and has hot chocolate and reads on Aww. Christmas Eve. That's so lovely. Isn't that amazing? That's a beautiful tradition. I so, Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, that just sounds like right up my family's alley. We have so many Christmas traditions, but, you know, always welcoming more all the time. And my family, I mean, I mentioned it on the show previously, love reading, big group of readers, my my crew. Yeah. I feel like the only thing that would stop us from doing that is the fact that it's one of the only times we get together through the year. And so we'd be like, yeah, we're going to read here for like 10 minutes and then back to talking about all the news that we want to share with each other. <laughs> That's amazing. You're like, stop reading break. I love that. It's, it's called a reading party. Amazing. My, uh, Jeff I and I are, are fond of the old reading party situation. <laughs> I'm so jealous of your family. Um, Yola Boca Flood, uh, it's J O L A B O K A F L O D, which could be a Malazan Book of the Fallen character. Let's just sit, put it out, out there. Uh, but it's not yet. Maybe later in the books, Yola Boca Flood will show up. Um, but uh, I love this because. You know what you're going to get. You know it's going to be a book. It's a, it's about choosing the right book for mm. the right person. And my family in recent years, you know, we've done, um, 
you know, one side of my family, we do a, 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 you know, like a secret Santa, pick one name and you get one gift for, for the adults. Uh, and the other side of my family, we just don't do gifts for the adults at all. We just do gifts for the kids. And so my wife and I are trying to introduce Yola Boca Flood into, mm. uh, into the mix so that all the adults do get something, but you know, you're going to get a book and it's about, you know, it's about finding that book that you think that person would want because that's the other thing that I, sorry to keep rambling, but the, the yeah. other thing that, um, that I find so, I don't know what the word is, I guess, um, less than exciting about <laughs> being an adult in the world of Christmas is mm -hmm. people are just like, give me the list of the things you want. You know, like, what, what do you want? I'll just buy the thing you want, you know? <laughs> and I love the idea of a gift that's like, I know it's going to be a book, but you're going to figure out this book that you think I want, you know? Mm -hmm. I like that. I, I do like that. I, um, I mean, but uh, anybody who's listened to the main DLC before knows that my family is very stubborn. We're definitely not like a give me a list kind of family. Ah. It's like you must intuit through the year yeah. something meaningful <laughs> uh, to bring on the before your chosen person. We, uh, by way of gifts for my family, we say all the kids do a name exchange, but we all buy for the parents and the kids. Um, so there, and there's like a you know, a weighting of the, the gifts in, in two different directions for the people yeah. who have earned the most love <laughs> or needed, at least at this time. Earn my love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's so much stress to that. I actually have like a deep anxiety about finding the right gift for the person that I have. And even when you raise it down to, you just have one person's name. And then I'm spending like months just sitting there going, it's gotta be, it's only one person. It, it must be perfect. <laughs> I love the idea of Yellow Book of Load because under a theme, I can do the theme. Okay. Give me the theme. I'm on it. I will sit there and I can th think of a perfect book and it would feel so special, but, rem but still remove the pressure of right. like coming up with something like perfect on your own. Somebody yeah. would still feel just as thought of. I feel like it would almost be, I think we've talked maybe before about like sharing a book with somebody feeling like a vulnerable experience being like, I love this. Do you love it? Right. And I feel like it just opens a door to like, I think that you will like this and here's the reasons why. And there's a discussion around it and like learning about each other in like a really specific way. I think that's really beautiful. Yeah. And then you can just obsess about which chocolate to give them. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. must be the perfect chocolate. <laughs> Do they like nougat? Or are they more of a <laughs> crunchy kind of guy? Darker milk. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah. So do you know what, what book you're getting? Like when did you uh, and your wife decide that this was a thing? Well, she, we found out about this relatively late. We found out about it. I think she learned that it exists last week. So it's mm -hmm. it's pretty late. I mean, we're recording this. Today is the 21st of December. So, I mean, it's, you know, tick tock, tick tock. In fact, mm -hmm. I've already even done, we already visited my family and did uh, the, our gift exchange and everything. So this will be like a next year for the wider extended family uh, idea. But we're doing it just the the four of us, myself and my wife and my two kids, I mean, my kids aren't buying books, but you know what I mean? They're receiving <laughs> books. Um, and um, so I'm, you know, I'm currently trying to figure out the, the book that A, I can buy my wife and B, will arrive before <laughs> before Christmas <laughs> Eve. <laughs> tick tock, tick tock. I mean, I guess I could run out to an actual store. A physical store. Gross. Yeah, I don't like leaving my house. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, you know, I think this year will be a little, little, you know, slapdash, but I, we want to, you know, set sow the seeds for next year and uh, mm -hmm. make this a, a bigger event uh, for the wider family next year. So is everybody giving everybody a book? Everybody gets one name to give a book to. I think to make it feasible, to make it manageable, it will be the latter. I feel like yeah. you, you, you get one person to buy a book for and everybody gets one book. I think that makes, instead of being this pile of books. Although <laughs> I must say, Yola Boca Flowed evidently translates directly to Christmas book flood. <laughs> it's, the, it's the yellow book flow. It's, so if you're <laughs> underneath a mountain of books, it's not necessarily uh, off brand for Yolo book of flood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, uh, I think, it, you know, one, one name, one book, one chocolate, you know, mm -hmm. I think that makes, makes most sense. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah. Well, that's really sweet. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. I love, love, love that. Yeah. If anybody listening uh, already celebrates Yola Boca Flor, maybe we're uh, maybe we're huge in Iceland. I don't know. Maybe there's <laughs> I- Icelanders who are uh, listening to this right now and like, oh yeah, that's called Tuesday. You know, <laughs> or actually in this case, Sunday. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> that. I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday, whatever you celebrate yes. and however you enjoy uh, enjoy it. Um, but I love the idea of infusing a little bit of reading in there as well. And I love what your family does. It's just so, so cool. All right. Well, let's get into it and talk about chapters seven and eight of House of Chains by Steven Erickson. So spoilers starting now. And the first thing I want to say, Lana, is I believe last week you were like, all these characters are showing up. We just need Heboric, and then we'd be like <laughs> everybody we've been following. And guess what? Chapter seven starts with Woo! good old ghost hands. hands, baby. Ghost hands. Yes. So, were you excited to see him? A POV of our old buddy, the the disgruntled former priest of Fenner. I was, and I was excited because you know my memory's not so good. Uh, I obviously prove that time and again with not remembering anybody's names, but also it's like, great, you know, we're on book four now. That means memories from books one and two are being ejected from my brain. Uh, (laughs) So in my memory, Hebrick was (laughs) Hebrick was like losing it a, a bit at the end of the book, right? He like touched the thing and then he was like getting very sick and like something was happening to him. Yeah. And so I was very excited to see him sort of very lucid and informative because I like the POV that he adds through, you know, he is a historian. A, 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 a historian. Oh, I love a historian. <laughs> a historian. Hiborican, the historian. <laughs> he is a historian. And so he has, uh, the way he's written has sort of this, like this, much like Duker in uh, the Dead House Gates, witnessing. And, mm-hmm. and yeah. you know, processing. And I really like that. And I like that he sort of s- is sitting in that sort of mental space again. Yes, I agree. And, you know, I believe we have confirmation that he is the reason that Fenner got ousted from the Pantheon and thrust mm-hmm. into the mortal realm. Like he touched the big jade statue. Don't just, if it's shiny and pretty and you find it in the middle of the desert, don't just touch it. Don't just you know? go, don't just go be touching things. Don't be doing, doing a doink. Keep your a, stumps to yourself. <laughs> keep your stumps to yourself. Uh, yes. And, and so uh, we saw the fallout of so much of that during Memories of Ice of Fenner being ejected from the Pantheon and Trake uh, being uh, replacing as the God of War. Uh, and so, you know, I think there, it's really interesting to revisit him and see what's going on there and honestly i've loved just the fact that we're sort of back in it's so interesting we'll get to it but so much of the chapter seven is like hey let's summarize what happened in the previous books a Mm -hmm. little bit you know let's catch you up and i loved it because Mm -hmm. it does feel like this sequel that you know i mean it by definition, reason, is one. For some reason, it feels but like a sequel. What I mean, it, what I mean to say is, it, it felt like so, so much crescendoed and came to a satisfying place, and then now we're like picking it up. It feels to me like I'm revisiting. You know, I, I, we're we're picking up the pieces of this thing that that almost came to a close, and I know it didn't because I always knew there was going to be ten books. But I imagine as these books were coming out, if you were reading them in time, it, it would have been mm-hmm. a very welcome thing to get back on the same page, so to speak. You know? Yeah. What I think anyway. is interesting is, is about you, sorry, going back to the, the, you know, Fenner being ousted and like the confirmation that it was a uh, Heberich's fault. I feel like, is it confirmation or is it like Heberich is like, I did this, but like, we don't yeah. know. We don't know. No, but it feels like, I don't know. I, I interpreted the book's tone as being like, he knows because it's true. You know, like that's why he feels mm. it so strongly. Like he, he's got a guilty conscience in a little, in a way, because it's actually what happened. Because but, of you this know, Mr. You Manhattan know. situation in the desert or whatever's going on out there. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Manhattan. He didn't what go did to, I say? 
He didn't Mr. go to 12 Manhattan. years of Manhattan yeah. Medi- medical school <laughs> to be called Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I, uh, I, I love the perspective that we're getting of him, you know, feeling like this is my fault. But the reason I'm kind of like, you know, he deeply thinks that it is, but like, I guess I'm like, it was kind of a statue's fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's, is it well, his fault? I mean, or is it... <laughs> technically it's Bowden's fault. Cause didn't Bowden like push his hand after he touched it. He pushed oh, yeah, his he hand like... onto the tattoos or something. I don't know. I feel like I think there's a lot of blame to go around, you know. I can't wait for us to like keep going forward and like the facts from the previous books just get foggier and foggier. <laughs> I know. Uh, we're sorry. We're everyone. really the worst people to be doing this. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, first scene of chapter seven is our our buddy Ghost Hands talking to uh, Felicity and the Younger. Now, this is another foggy memory of mine. Is I don't remember the exact circumstance of Felicity and Elder slash Shaikh adopting this orphan. Was there anything special about, or was it just one of the orphans that she decided to name? I Felicin? thought it was like like literally the first one that she saw. She yeah. kind of like walked she's, in and she's like, "I'm Shaikh," and the girl's like, and "She's like, and you're Felicity." <laughs> I'm rubber, you're glue. <laughs> so um, if anybody's like, no, 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 that was Felicity. She could be like, this Felicity? I'm not Felicity. <laughs> I'm Shaikh. <laughs> right, right. It's a scapegoat child. Yeah. Uh, interesting that uh, first time we're learning that Felicity's like super into poetry. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. That or Felicin's hearing like, like a lot about their, their parentage. Mm-hmm. Other than their parents were nobles. I don't think we knew a lot about them. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, interesting that she still kind of has, she's like, I came in, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I've been inhabited by the goddess. I swooped in and, uh, you know, ready to fight a war, but also dabbling in some journaling, you know, she's yeah. like, she's just, like an emo kid. She, totally she went through the kid. angst, angst phase phase. And now she's, she's just in the sadness phase and she got to get it out. She got to get it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, Haboric and Felicity and the Younger uh, go uh, through the whirlwind camp um, and meet up with Leo Man. Um, and th- see the 3,000 uh, orphans that uh, Shaikh has uh, adopted. So there's a lot of adoption going on. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, interesting dynamic that continues between Haboric. Uh, Leo Man and our buddy Carsa Orlong slash Toblakai. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the the butting of heads that uh, Haboric and and Carsa have still. Uh, and Leo Man evidently is all about that Durhang. Uh, he's uh, smoking the the wacky Durhang. Yeah, I think it's interesting that Carsa and Haboric butt heads so much because I kind of picture like Haboric as another. Um. Oh, what's his name? Rel. Uh, who's that guy? Malik who's Rel or Mal- yeah. not Malik? Um, the guy who is in the Nam Torvald Nam, who's like oh, kind of yeah, talkative, yeah, yeah. like his Nam. buddy yeah, yeah. in like yeah. the, the opening chapters. Right. I feel like H- Hebrick could could be that for Carsa, mm. and maybe there's just that butting heads because of Carsa's like natural disposition to be like shut up. Right. Um. Also, one quick note about the child armies. I think it's interesting that we see, you know, Kalam, we see him again and him and Manala have this child army that they're building and then we come over here and then there's a second child army being built up. Uh, Right. I don't know any significance to that, but just interesting that this is sort of centering around this like indoctrination of youth from the very beginning. I didn't get the sense that this one was as overtly army. You know, I guess, like, sorry, I guess it's oh, sorry. The just the mass adoption of children yeah, into something, and right. by Shaikh's nature, my brain says eventual army. I th- I think that's a pretty safe bet. But yeah, I mean, obviously, with the Kalam and Allah situation, it's like let's train Overt. them to be killers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and interesting that we get this tidbit here of uh, Karsa's blood sword broke. Yeah, like how did that happen? Completely off screen. Like, oh, uh, what? I like that blood sword. 
Do you think uh, we're no. going to go back and have like a backwards time jump? I, at this point, anything is possible. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't put anything past the structure of these novels because I just feel like they're so unpredictable in that regard. And, and that's part of what makes them so fun is mm-hmm. you never know, you know, uh, how things are going. He doesn't seem to be constrained by any sense of, temporal <laughs> you know it's like we can be slightly off we can catch up to other books we can be completely behind you know we spent four chapters just flashing back to Carsa orlong's origin story and all of that is very thrilling to me so i'm not i'm not putting anything past what will happen in so, the future let me guess not do you think but do you hope i feel like we got such like infused with like sticking with Carson for so long. And then now yes. he's almost like a stranger again. And it's like, what happened I between know. now and then that I guess I'm, I'm saying, I, I hope that we learn more about it <laughs> like soon. Well, I'm so eager to continue his journey. We'll, we'll get to it in a moment, but there is that scene glimpse. from his POV in these chapters that we read this week. And that makes me worried that we won't because it felt like that was that was kind of bridging the gap of him being like, man, it's sure been a, a long while now where I really <laughs> have changed. And it's like, ah, I want to I see all that. Yeah. Um, you pick up, you picked up carving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. The, just his his devotion to Shaikh is what's so perplexing. Like that, the step of I'm this warrior on the run, you know, I, we all obviously saw a transition of him, of his disposition in the mm-hmm. four chapters by the end of the four chapters, but we, and we saw him sort of running away with Leo man, but we, it, he seems so devoted to Shaikh and the whirlwind and the, the rebellion. Mm-hmm. It's like, where did that, where did that piece come in? Yes, exactly. Uh, and I, uh, there's some other things I want to touch on in his flashback, but I'll wait yeah. till we actually get there. Okay. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So we find out some pretty awful things about Bidithal here. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Bidithal, who is one of the three uh, high mages that um, Shaikh is keeping in her retinue. I assume is, that this is one of the dudes who at the end of uh, Dead House Kids, she was like, y'all have to kneel to me. Yes. And they were like, none and and then they eventually did. I assume he's one yes. of those guys. Yes. Bidithal Laoric, not to be confused with Heboric, uh, <laughs> Laoric and Febril uh, yes. are the three. And uh, Bidithal has been a very bad boy. Evidently um, did some awful things to Shaikh before she was Shaikh or before Felicity was Shaikh. Yeah. Yes. Um, the original Shaikh that got assassinated. <clears throat> um, by Ten Baralta, by the way, Ten A Baralta is the one who assassinated. I didn't remember that, <clears throat> but now um, there is some sense that Bidithal wants to abuse uh, Felicin the Younger as well, and Heboric wants to put a stop to that, as one would hope. And so uh, it's like that built-in superstition where it's like, oh, the reason that there was this success is because they underwent this trauma. So I yeah. must give them that trauma. It's like such a nasty, nasty framing. Icky, icky, icky. Yes. Uh, Bidithal, uh, awful, awful human. Or mm-hmm. I don't even know if he's human. Um, <laughs> awful person. something. Yeah. Um, and, and interesting, the dynamic of, of Heboric saying, why doesn't Felicin just get rid of this dude banish him like she has done to these others um but she think or he thinks that she thinks that febril is going to betray everybody and she needs a two to one mage situation so she needs bidithal around for when febril will betray them right i'm reading that correctly (laughs) that's my understanding as well yeah so interesting dynamic there um then, um, so Heboric is like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go confront, uh, Bidithal. I'm going to, and, and we get but some. But Heboric gets this information from Laoric. I keep wanting to say Leoric. Laoric and, uh, Karsa, right? Uh, yes. He, 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 he was like beckoned by them and he's like, why do they want to talk to me? Okay. I'll go talk to them. Is this the section you're we're no, talking I, about? No, I, my understanding is that he is going he gets the information from Leo Man 
who's kind of oh, Leo man. Yeah, sorry, Leo high, man. right? He's a little like coming down from his high and kind of, um, yeah. you know, I confused Leo man and Lore for a second. Leo yeah. man and Carsa who are hanging. Yes, you see the animosity it's the animosity between uh, Carsa and Heb- Heboric, and they're like. Are you sure you're not gonna like? He's not gonna go run and tell Shaikh that we yeah. have this information. And he's like, "Oh yeah, no, he's not gonna tell Shaikh. That's for sure." I know where he's going. Yeah, and he's going to confront Bidithal. And mm-hmm. on his way to confronting Bidithal, he runs into Laoric. So that's probably yes. where you, yeah, you got the little conflating those two. But um, and and also in there, he's kind of like thinking about the whirlwind and and Shaikh and the whirlwind goddess. And I think it's the first time we get an insight into what the whirlwind goddess is. And his theory is that the whirlwind goddess is, is sort of this minor deity that wasn't very important, but somehow got into possession of a fragment of the Warren of Shadow. And so that empowered it to then create the whirlwind as a thing. Is that like how Kelimbed became... Shadow Throne, is that like a similar like situation? Because I don't think he was a I don't know if we would quantify him as like a minor deity, but that's all I could think of is like, okay, these shards, we know that right. Kelimbed and Dancer kind of hopped in and we're like, uh-huh, anybody home? No, we are. That sort right. of gave me the same vibe here. Well, so it's 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 kind of um it's kind of dense, but so there's the the goddess, the god Rashan, mm-hmm. which is also a god of darkness. And then mm-hmm. there's the Warren of Shadow and Rashan and the Shadow or, or Rashan was sort of in uh, priests of Rashan were in a civil war, right? Yeah. And Bidithal was part of a cult in that civil war that lost. Yeah. And I think that's what shattered the Warren. I may not yes. have that wrong. Right. And then so pieces of the Warren were available to be snatched up and Shaikh or not Shaikh, the whirlwind goddess did one and maybe Cotillion slash Shadow Throne did as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's clumsy. I also could said, be confusing. But... I also could be confusing the fact that one is the Shadow Throne and one is darkness. And yeah. Shadow is not it's not the same thing. But right. the process seems yes. similar to me. Yeah. So he's walking up to Bithal's tent house. And Lauric is walking out and he's like, what are you doing here? He's like, ah, what are you doing here? He's like, ah, we, neither of us like that dude. I was like, yeah, I know. He's kind of a loser. Not a, not, not a good dude. And he's like, um, yeah, and he's and he, he angry right now. So yeah. good luck. Yeah. Uh, and also the coolest moment when he sees another dude with no hands and no feet drawing in the dust. And he's oh. like, what's that guy's name? Uh, Steve, yeah. Simon, <laughs> Silgar. Uh, oh, know. gosh. Uh, and just like with Silgar being there, I was like, oh my God, he's still alive. Yeah. It well, like calls hit me him, in my stomach. He calls him Toblakai's greatest work or something like that, his project. Or it's like, oh, so gross. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nasty. But also, he's drawing pictures in the sand of somebody with chains around them mm-hmm. and Heboric is like is he drawing me or is he drawing himself like who's got ch-? and he gets who, a chill who is that he gets a chill when he walks away from it it's like that feels like you know very is, overt foreshadowing but isn't that interesting because doesn't like Karsa not like Heboric because Heboric could like see the chains around him wouldn't he have just been right. like oh he's drawing Karsa well but he but I think the drawing has stump hands and that's oh, why he's right, like, right, oh, right, is he yeah. drawing me or is he drawing himself? Either way, I could totally see. My first interpretation when I read that was, oh, Silgar is going to become one of the crippled gods' pantheon. Like somehow, Karsa keeping him alive is a huge mistake, and Silgar because yeah. he, you know, he is a mage. We'll get, mm-hmm. dra- but now, but then when he walked away, I was like, oh, no, Haboric is the one who's going to get. But I think there's intentional Tied ambiguity in there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Uh, all right. So then a really cool scene, I thought, of going into Bidithal's chamber, which is sort of in this ruin. He's like erected this uh, tent inside a former structure that's broken down. And he's sitting there. I just see it so vividly in my mind. He's sitting there in front of the fire, like talking to the shadows that he's making. Yeah. 
I thought that was so rad. Uh, it was like a very villainous reveal for yeah this this guy. I mean, obviously, we already learned like what a nasty dude he is. Yeah, but then <laughs> I picture kind of like a, a Gaston situation, talking to the shadows on the wall. Like what a <laughs> what a nobody <laughs> shadow puppets like Gaston. <laughs> Uh, but I just thought I, I could see it's so cinematic to me, like walking in his back is to him. The fire is flickering. He's got these like sheets up cause it's a tent and mm-hmm. he's, you know, he's muttering and making and conversing with the shadow. Just such mm-hmm. a cool way to talk about being involved in the shadow Warren. It just, it's such an awesome image. I, thought. And I also think it's interesting because it is sort of portrayed as like a, like a trite thing, but we've also seen, you know, Cotillion visiting a bunch of people. Yeah. And it's like, maybe he really was talking to somebody, not just in puppets on the walls, but who knows? Yeah. And there's a really interesting moment too, where Bidithal says, Hey, can your hands make shadows? And Hiborg's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to find out. I don't yeah. know. And it's such a weird <laughs> line to draw. It's like, I'm not going to tell you if my hands draw, make shadows. Like what, well, what does it mean if they do? You know? Yeah. Does does it mean anything? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I, it's it, I just like that he's like, all right, you're here, experiment time, and yeah. he's like, no, man. ew, ew, <laughs> <laughs> you're gross and ew. <laughs> yeah. uh, and also, Habork is like, hey, I know what you're what you're doing, and it, and cut it out, stop it, you're gross. He's like, what me? No, I I'm the one that made uh, Shaik oh, Shaik. Cool What's goddess that? you have there. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're welcome. So gross. And he's like, well, okay, don't, if you do it to the younger Felicin, I'm going to rip your head off. And he's like, well, there's plenty of other girls. It's like, oh, yeah, Ugh. you're yucky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then, uh, so basically that, that, that threat lands, but we see that Bidithal is very bad boy. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I feel like this is just the beginning of, this contention here. Yeah. The next scene is our Carsa POV scene. And uh, I loved this, his sort of thing, you know, it's a lot of just him sort of thinking and, uh, you know, kind of like we were talking about catch us, catching us up a bit as to where his, his state of mind is. His state of mind. And, you know, you, you feel how much he's grown because he's talking about, uh, during his like sort of recap, he he goes over the fact that Leo Man is like all up in the Durang, but he he never sees him right smoke it, but he sees the aftermath, and then he always seems to use it with just enough time to pass out before the end of or the the turning point of crucial conversations he'd want to have. It's like this avoidance thing that he calls out. He calls out, you know, needing to go home after this and like right the wrongs that have been done to his people and sort of like Mm -hmm. the role that's been put put over their eyes and like the lives that they are living are because they don't know. And that knowledge was robbed from them. Like you see how much he's changed his own mentality about like who his people are and what his values are and like what he, you know, from the first chapters of what he wanted to bring back to his people, which is like the trophies from all the children that he killed yeah. versus now wanting to bring back the knowledge and the growth that he has gained in the world. And uh, very sort of interesting going back there. Yeah. The the piece that I really uh, clung on to, because I think I mentioned it right at the very beginning of when we sort of figured out, you know, that this is, he is Toba Kai um, was, you know, that moment that Shai got assassinated it seems surprising that that would happen under his watch because he's such an astute warrior. Mm -hmm. And then he just briefly is like, Oh yeah. And Leoman was so bummed about that. And that sort of started him with the Durang. And so him kneeling down to Sheik was one of relief so that he could, yes, because he's been burdened by trying to keep Leoman sane and just like, Oh my God, (laughs) thank God that you are here, whoever you are. Right, claiming to be Shaikh, it's gonna put my buddy to rights, right. and that's sort of like where we. Yeah, that, that's all we got from that moment is they didn't mean to. It was bad. It went bad for a while, and now it's okay. 
Right. And I, I love his, his feeling of um, the moniker of Toblakai being, you know, a misnomer for him or, or sort of the, that mantle is misapplied because he, you know, he doesn't have that mighty thing in him anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and also his observations about the whirlwind goddess and thinking, you know, oh, she didn't want Felicin to be her vessel. She just, it just happened that way. Just, yeah. she just, she happened to be nearby and it had to, had to happen. So she did it. Yeah. I thought that was interesting too. It is interesting. And uh, so much, such beautiful prose there uh, in discussing the, um, the things that Leo man has shown him, which is like, there's this, uh, you know, sea of, of, of sand, but certain times of the year, it'll blow away and it'll reveal these ships underneath it, but it's uh. there only for a, a one night. And then, you know, and then it's the, the sand is blown back atop it and you don't realize what's underneath there. It's, it's such beautiful stuff. Yeah. I, I love it. And you, I, that's the whole sensitivity of it. And yeah. then how that leads into his next like conversations with, uh, Shaik, both of yeah. them are so comparatively soft feeling and not soft. Like you gone soft buddy, but like there's a tenderness to their yeah. interaction that I really enjoyed. And this notion that the, the rebellion such as it is, is not a, necessarily even a rebellion against the empire but a, re a rebellion against order. Yeah. Which I thought was so, so interesting. Because Carsa even talks about how it is like people want to live in the, this, like the sort of despicable ways that they have been living. He sort of calls out that everybody's like, yeah, they want no rules. They want to be right. nasty guys and do nasty right. things. And so that is what they're rebelling against is the idea of not being able to do just whatever they want for better yes. or worse. And then – he approaches uh, 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 Phyllis and the Elder, the Shaikh, reborn, mm -hmm. and she's sitting reading the book of Drijna and uh, it basically has the same observation, which is, hey, this book is all about destruction and messing everything up and you know causing chaos. It, there's no part of, hey, let's rebuild it with something better. There's no, what do we replace it with? It's just anarchy in the usa you know it's yeah. just <laughs> it's just uh, uh it's me. just punk rock it's there's no you know there's no plan for anything else well something that's so interesting to me about that scene where we see phyllis and sitting there with the book and it's like well everybody knows what book that is that's the book of drijna that moment was like in the in you know when we first encountered this book it was like nobody open it it's so special yeah. it's going to start the whirlwind and then it opens and she gets immediately assassinated it's like oh this book does have a power the whirlwind started whatever is going on with this book and the fact that she's just sitting there like yeah, flipping casually through it perusing it is like picturing like that slapping sound of like an old magazine page some kind of pulp <laughs> and she's like there's violence in here is like did you so know that there's little perfume samples <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she's sitting there rubbing the book on herself. Uh, it's uh, it was like so. There's like an irreverence to this thing that was like, you know, the 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 MacGuffin from the other books. It's yeah. just so interesting how that turns with her just being like, okay, puts it back on whatever like throne shrine wherever it was sitting, and then they just yeah. walk away from it. Um, it's interesting. And then uh, Carson's like, "Hey, come with me. Uh, follow me to uh, my little my workshop, my little grove, uh, my my studio." Car Carson Orlong's picked up a picked up a real hobby. Yeah, you know? um, carving his dead friends into stumps. I thought that was such a beautiful thing, and uh, honestly, an amazing place to take that character, and just a, a lovely scene. Very vivid again in my imagination of walking in there and seeing them. And before he even said the names, I knew who he was carving, right? I really? Knew it I, because I feel like it was set up to, however briefly, make you think that he's like carving the faces in the rock into these trees. And so then he's like, yeah, carving, <laughs> no, now my brain goes blank on the Delam names. Thord and, and Delam uh, Thord. Bayroth Guild. Bayroth, yeah. Yeah. So, but so briefly, it's like, oh, maybe he's carving his like weird god so he can be like i don't really like you or, like to look at them look them in the eye kind of thing but the fact that it was like no he carved his friends 
again, that was like such a growth moment. These people who he was yeah. like, y'all don't know better. I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah. Now he's honoring them so deeply. That's beautiful. And it's, yeah, it really shows the place he's, he's gone where, you know, he, he has regrets. He has, he's, com he's completely uh, looking at the world in a new, new way and feels like he needs to honor these people who sort of had it right, you know, mm -hmm. and he, he took them to their destruction uh, for what, you know? <clears throat> Uh, and I love that moment where she's like, oh, you got seven more. Are you going to do your seven gods? And we hear in his mind, he goes, no. And what he actually says is, I haven't decided yet. I yeah. thought that was a cool moment too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this really interesting thing where a bunch of snakes show up. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, he's like, oh, they just come to watch. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's very, very like Snow White, you know? It was like, well, are they a uh, Divers? Wishing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> do you think there may be a Divers? Oh, I didn't even think of that. Maybe. That's I was like, what do you mean the snakes just come to watch? <laughs> I didn't even think anything of it. <laughs> but you're totally right. It makes way more sense if it's maybe a diverse. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. They're like, this is actually usually where we make our mating ball and you're kind of in the way, man. <laughs> <laughs> mating ball. <laughs> Snake fans know. <laughs> Uh, all right. The next scene uh, is uh, back to Heboric. He's dreaming about his giant jade statue. And he actually is like, this thing is alien. It's from another realm. I really shouldn't have touched it. <laughs> Why did I touch it? It's um, always creeping into my brain. Making me think about it all the time. Yeah. Push it right up. <laughs> and then um, uh, Lil, Lil, Lil Felicin, uh comes in. <laughs> Lil uh, Fell. Lil Fell. Lil Fell. Um, says mom wants to talk to you and he's like all right do i have to yes and she's <laughs> got herself a, a real meeting of all of the all of the top muckety mucks of this side of the battle uh corbelo dom chemist rillo these are the the generals the that villains we saw from before yeah, exactly fighting uh with um our buddy it's coltane uh, coltane yes uh, and then some new folks. We have the, our three mages, Laoric, Bidathol, and Febril are all there. And then a couple of new uh, folks. Hinaris, which is this banished witch who drinks poison <laughs> to prevent people from assassinating her. Such a cool detail. And like looks it. It's like she's got these dark circles in her eyes and everybody's like, oh yeah, them's the poison circles. <laughs> well, it reminds me, she like magically makes herself look young. I just imagine like a lady who's had like way too many facelifts, but you can still see <laughs> around her eyes like, oh, she's, that's not her right age, you know? <laughs> um, and so uh, <laughs> this is an awesome scene too, where she's, <laughs> uh, uh, Shaikh Reborn, our, our girl Felicia's like, all right, a lot's happened. I'm not going to go through it. Uh, Laoric, explain it to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'll, I'll sit here. You catch everybody up. There's a lot that's happened. It's like, I don't know. It's like three books worth. Go. <laughs> yeah, the same thing I do in a meeting when I actually don't remember what the meeting's about. I'm like, we're going to sit here. Uh, yeah. How about you take the lead on this one? <laughs> That's what right. I, okay. Yeah. 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 No, I know what we're talking about. I know. That's doing. what I love to do uh, when I was, you know, DMing like you know, friends' games uh, of Dungeons and Dragons. Is like, all right, new session. Who wants to tell us what's happened up till now? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> it's part of the experience. <laughs> um, and so you know, obviously, we recap the situation with Fenner and Treach. Uh, we also talk about the the wolves, Trog, uh, Tog, and Fandere mm -hmm. uh, becoming, you know, the revitalizing the beast, the house of the beast, which the thrones uh, of the beast was called out to to the room. So all of the the divers and soul taken among us, <laughs> no. watch it, and I'm like, who's the divers and soul taken? <laughs> and guys, same thought. She's like, that was a a nice little. Uh, respectful PSA, <laughs> but like more details, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, somebody, I think it's um, one of the, I think it's uh, Corbolo is like, well, but tell us what's happened with all of the people that want to kill us. <laughs> like all of our, what's going on with the bridge burners and everybody. And they totally suss out, by the way, the, the, the big 
plan with Dujack and Whiskey Jack to fool everybody into thinking they've been outlawed <laughs> fooled exactly zero people, it seems. Everybody has sussed out what was really going on. It, right? it seems like it fooled only the people that absolutely needed to be fooled for like the one minute that they <laughs> needed to be fooled by it. Yeah. And then they barely held them together. And then Whiskey Jack dies and they're like, nah, you were lying to us anyways. And everybody kind of split up. Like, <laughs> what? Like, it's so, so funny to me that it was like this big mystery for the book. And then it's just everybody else is like, oh, yeah, they're lying. Everybody knows. No, they're no, lying. It's, it's obvious they did not get actually outlawed. And it was just a ploy <laughs> to be able to align with Oh, you believe Andrew that? And Anna, 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 yeah, this guy believed them. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, look, uh, um, and uh, yeah, I love this whole thing of of. He's like, yes, but tell me exactly who's alive and who's dead. And Lyric's like, all right, hang on a second. He finds out, uh, list the names. Who's the spy? Who's the spy? That's the good question. I don't know. I had the thought when I was reading it of. Is it just like rank and file? Are we supposed to think rank and file soldiers are the spy? Or are we supposed to, or, or we supposed to think, oh, there's a big named person we know that's a spy? It seemed like there's like, an, like he's like, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of people that were like ready to go. Like they seemed like they were fine. But then when things kind of shattered, they're like, hey, we were always on your side. <laughs> right. So it seems like there's some group of those people. But the fact that he's like, I'm going to contact my one person and it's like, me, 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 me. It, like it to me that says there's a named person who we who we must kind of know and they don't have to be like super present in the previous books but right kind of waiting for that other shoe to drop interesting i definitely could could see it just being like oh we got people in the army but yeah I, it would be more interesting if you're right yeah um but anyway one of the names that's named is Gnos. um <laughs> And uh, Chemist Rillo is like, oh, Quickpin? What about Quickpin? Where's Quickpin and Kalam? Where are Quickpin and Kalam? And it's like, I don't know where those people are. It's like, ah, they want to kill me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to know where they are. Uh, so I could not be in that place. Um, and uh, I thought the end of the scene was amazing where uh, Shaikh is like, everybody out except Aboric. And she just starts crying. It's like, my brother's alive. My brother's alive. This is like the first moment where I was, I, well, so far in, in this book entirely, I haven't been like, oh, I really hate this character. <laughs> but yeah. this moment in particular, especially because it seems like a, a beat of kindness between her and Heberick that I feel like I was so craving of yes. him being there to support her for the entire book, her constantly taking a dump on him at any time that she possibly could. Yeah. And then this letting down of her guard and seeing like what's at her heart is this fragility and this, this feeling so lost without her, her family or betrayed, like directly betrayed by her family. I yes. feel like we see directly into her innermost self in this moment and the fact that it's Haboric there comforting her and that she lets herself be comforted by him, I felt like was the moment I've been craving for books now between these two. So it was a beautiful moment, so well done. And I just so deeply felt for her and for them. Totally agree. Totally agree. And that there is still this kernel of Phyllis in there. It's mm -hmm. not just this Shaik you know, entity. Facade. Yeah, exactly. A yeah. beautiful way to end that chapter. Uh, chapter eight opens with, uh, we're, we're back with Gamut and uh, adjunct Tavor, speaking of the Perrin family. Uh, and they are in front, uh, trying to assemble their army that is now completely disorganized. All um, new recruits. Yes. <clears throat> yes. All these new recruits that are, you know, undisciplined any discipline they used to have is gone people are smacking them in the head with the flats of their swords trying to get them in, in line and it's not working um and uh i think this is such a funny scene because i feel like i'm so stubborn my brain is like they can't just stand in the line i can stand in the line <laughs> i like felt like weirdly so annoyed by thinking of them like fumbling around in the sand and just the fact that gamut is like you know, Tavor didn't make him stand in front of this 
mess as though he's like saying, these are my people. This is what I've done. She stands in front of them and like bears the burden of the embarrassment yeah. of the people in front of her was like such an interesting, like social dynamic situation, but also just like immediately so annoyed of like, we just, just stay in the line. What's the issue? I, the difference between you and me, Lana, is that um, I have a, a five-year-old that goes to school <laughs> and uh, at the end of the school, they all have to line up in a line uh, in order for the parents to come pick them up. Mm -hmm. And watching that catastrophe happen in front of me every day, uh, this was very plausible that you have a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, hard to hard to organize young people uh, getting distracted and goofing <laughs> off and yeah. Uh, oh, very, really I've lived this. <laughs> um, and interesting. So then Fiddler slash strings comes rushing up and uh, talks to cuddle who is this uh, another sapper who's, you know, kind of got a loose noodle, you know, um, and uh, is the one that killed Lenestro, which if you but recall, he wasn't. No? Dujek killed Lenestro. Oh, good memory. I is was that like, true? It is true. Can Dujek you remind was like, me? So what happened is they like get inside the gates finally at Uren and they poem calls like, we're not going to help Piltane or like whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then Lenestro is like, I cut this deal. You are, you should be so thankful and blah, 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 blah. Anything else. And Dujek's like, yeah, one more thing. And basically like a roundhouse kicks him in the throat and instantly kills him in the street. So he, we get like the, like the, uh, I can't think of the right word, the, the premonition of that when he like strangles the Nostroa and gets pulled off earlier. Right. And you're like, okay, Dujek's not going to kill this guy. He has like the self-control. And then later you get the right. payoff of finally seeing him just, instantly kill him so my brain's like dujek was like infiltrating he was able to like talk and cuddle is a name of a sapper from dead house gates however he did not kill the nostro so it's either he's taking cred for dujek's work or dujek and cuddle have like switched lives and he said interesting cuddle along at posing as Dujek and so Dujek could stay close to the action. And I don't know what's what, but I know that's not true. Wow. Good memory. I did not recall that at all. Uh, that's awesome and interesting to see if that pays off. Um, but I love the the next moment, which is, I feel like if it was actually Dujek though, Fiddler would have spied that and would have been like, oh no, you're that's you're not cuddle. I don't know. But, or they like talk because then the Dujek would have been like, yeah. oh, hey, strings. Right, right. Like right. they would have had a, like a mutual understanding, I feel Interesting. like. Interesting. Um, either way, I love what happens next, which is like the way we're going to get everybody's attention is we're going to just blow some <laughs> shit some up. some bombs off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just <laughs> blows up the uh, hole in the ground and everybody's like, ah. And he's like, if you don't listen, I will kill you. He's like holding another one <laughs> walking down the line. It's so it's like, <laughs> like every time the sappers are in a scene, they're always like a little manic doing the yeah. things that are like a, like way too intense. You're like, you need to calm down. And they're I like, love it. stand in a line, like <laughs> holding a grenade or whatever is so funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so great. It's uh, they're, in order to ha have that profession, in order to be the guy who handles things that might explode in your bag at any time, you have to be a little, a little uh, off center. You know, you have to be a little uh, unhinged. I love yeah. it. And I just love like the constant thing, like people showing up with a bag and always somebody like flopping the bag down and then somebody being like, what's in that bag? <gasps> bombs! There's bombs in the bag and you threw it on the ground. <laughs> I'm standing right next to it. I love yeah. how we always see, like we've seen the explosives go off and do like massive damage. Like as they're like trying to run into, I forget the name of the city where they're like trying to run through all of the cannibals and they like set off those, yeah. those explosions. And, and it was like massive, you know, the damage that's possible, but you also know how lethal th these things are. By how often the allies are like, get the thing away. <laughs> yeah. It's like very, well, I love it. it. One of my favorite things about this whole series is how there's this wonderful juxtaposition between this very mundane 
explosives and magic. You know, magic yeah. is this extremely powerful, devastating, scary, potent force. But also there's bombs and they're just as de devastating and powerful and scary. It's like, mm -hmm. I love that there's this, you know, this very grounded, you know, non-magical threat that is equally feared by people. I think it's Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so then we have this amazing moment where everybody's in line. Everybody's, it's like all kind of working. We did it. We pulled it, pulled it off. Everybody's paying attention. We might get these people in line. And then this little kid shows up with a bone in their, in their hand, like, hi. <laughs> and everybody's like, ah, oh, <laughs> oh, little kid is terrible omen. <sighs> Uh, this, this little grub, <laughs> poor Captain Keneb's little adopted toddler son. Poor I little... found a bone to play with, Daddy. <laughs> I just love that he named the kid Grub. <laughs> no. I don't know why I'm so enamored with that. I'm like, Grub, you can do anything you want. He also is like, well, we could change it later. It just seems appropriate now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're not going to change it. Um, Did but... you understand? I mean, I guess I understood. Well, no, the kids keep going. Sorry. Well, I think I'm going to say the same thing that you were going to say, uh, which is as it was happening and uh, like the way it's described as, you know, 4,000 people all gasped at the same moment uh, and they're all freaking out. I was like, what? What is it? What? What? And yeah. It's like, and it was a little child holding a bone. And I was like, is that Coltane reborn? <laughs> is that like, what, what are we all freaking out about? Well, what? my brain said that it was what uh, Sormolo Dom or whatever his name is, Sormolo butterfly took him away oh yeah yeah sormo uh, sormo yeah you live on sormo <laughs> yes one of the many one of the child mages right the fact that he was like oh yeah this kid came to me i found him i adopted him whatever early on in this thing and now he's this that's what i assume it is I don't know. Yeah. Why. I thought it would might be, you know, we know that Duiker had the necklace thing. Yeah. We, you know, we know I was like, it could be like somebody reborn and everybody's freaking out because they're alive again. But no, it's just a terrible image that everybody recognizes as being <laughs> a bad sign. It's just like, yeah. like, like a oh. child is leading us and leg bone is Means we march. Us marching. Yeah. It's like we all make the same inferences at the same, the same <laughs> like, moment. Wow, everybody's really up on their omens. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> uh, but I, I also, it's such a cool, it's such a cool impediment to place in front of success for everybody. It's like, no, now everyone believes they're doomed. And what are we going to do about that? Now, we had a disorganized army. We organized them for about five seconds before they realized, <laughs> oh, we're all dead, dead men walking anyway. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then Fiddler has to come up with a plan to deal with that. And I love the plan. First of all, he tells this really wonderful story about, he's like, I'm going to tell you how to do it. And the way I'm going to tell you how to do it is from a story. If you've heard this story before, shut up. I'm going to tell it yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Uh -huh. uh, about Admiral Nock before he was an admiral, admiral and this amazing story of they filled up their water barrels. They're out at sea. It's like, who wants some water? Everybody fresh water. And the whole place is like, <laughs> we love water. Let's get water. <laughs> All right. I'm opening up the water barrels. What could go wrong? Open the water barrel. Snake bites his eye. <laughs> Dead. Everybody's like, that's not good. Uh, it's like, don't worry. We have lots more barrels of water. Snakes everywhere. All Just snakes. snakes. Oh, my gosh. So ridiculous. Because it, looks it like... was snake season. I was, they and, and, filled them up during snake season. Uh. And so they're just fully full of snakes. The So amazing. So everybody just <laughs> dies of thirst because... They don't, have they don't want to drink snake water. And hey, you know what? Can't blame them. It's so funny because you're like, okay, you open the barrel and a snake pops out and bites him in the eye and he dies. And it's like, they're all like going to be thirsty. That's it. And I'm like, oh, and the lesson is the other barrels were full of water. And we're not going to like follow the, the one bad omen. And it was like, no, they really all were full of snakes. And I was like, where's the lesson there? <laughs> He's like, that's what you don't do. <laughs> That's what you don't do. You don't fight the omen because sometimes the omen is full of snakes. <laughs> Just an amazing story. Uh, and then the coolest, uh, coolest plan is like, 
We're not going to tell people the omen is not true. We're going to tell them that's extremely true, but we have the magic fix. We have the magic solution. It's just so brilliant. Mm-hmm. I love Why that. was it the magic solution? It was just a trinket for the sake of having a trinket? It's just, if you're going to freak out because of your wild superstition, I'm going to give you a wild superstition that trumps it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the, the the wild superstition. Like, oh, I can't, I, I, I can't do the... You know, there's ghosts in my house. Oh, really? Well, here's magic beans. And they, they're the ghosts get rid of her. You know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's such a br- it fight nonsense with nonsense. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yes. It's great. I love it. Um, so- <laughs> and just like having to go dig up all of the bodies <laughs> in, around everywhere to, to fight the omen. Very yeah. Funny. It's love just, it. it's just great. We need finger bones. Let's get. I need more. We need, I need phalanges. Stats. Lots, lots of finger bones. <laughs> glue. I need glue. Um, <laughs> uh, this, then the next scene is uh, um, back to uh, Gamut and uh, Tavor. And uh, they are, you know, they're trying to figure out what to do with the army. And Gamut's like, no, we're screwed. We, the army, we're, there's no army. Disband the army. We, there's nothing we can do. They all think they're going to die. Little boy with a bone is unbeatable. <laughs> you can't <laughs> can't fight little boy with a bone. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Tavor's like, um, well, let's make sure nobody gets drunk because all they're going to want to do is get drunk. Make sure nobody has drawing. And then she's like, and give me my girl to Amber. To, to Amber. To Amber. As and yet then, to be uh, met. All still the fists in this are book. like, we got we got we got problems with this to Amber girl. What's the deal? They pull uh, Gamut into a side meeting, sidebar, Gamut, what's going down? What's going on? And Gamut's like, hey, did you tell that boy to walk out with a leg bone? Mm -hmm. That's not cool. And Blistic's like, I did not. Even if I, even if I was going to, Caneb would never do it. So I just love love the phrasing. Even if you thought I was the type of person to do that. He is not. And he's yeah. like, that is legit. Yeah. Good logic. Yeah. You, you've you sold me. Uh, and then they're like, what's the deal with to Amber? And Gamma's like, all I know is that she used to be a concubine. She's super hot. And they're really into each other. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> She's real quiet. She doesn't say much. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Uh, then we have maybe my favorite scene in the entire section that we've that we're, we've read this week. These two chapters, which is uh, we get a uh, Lestara Yill POV, and she just reminisces about her backstory. Yeah, and it's one of the coolest backstories of the whole book, in my opinion, of the whole series so far. It's a cool backstory and like interesting because it has you know. Bitithal in it as well. Yes. Nasty guy from the uh in Shaikh's camp now, yes. who was like their dance teacher, I guess. Yes. Or like was at the school. Um we have dance and- magic now. There's dance magic. Dance magic. Well, is it is it dance magic or is it it's like in a it's like a but I uh, you know, later we get that information that it's sort of like the like like forms of like a martial yes. a martial art. But my my reading of it initially was you dance so hard that you see God, you know, mm. which is cool. I, by is the way, cool. that's what we do at the beginning of every one of these episodes. <laughs> it's our own shadow magic. It's form. shadow. It's a sh- we're shadow dancers. <laughs> um, oh, that's really good. But I yeah, I just love that this notion of at five years old you get banished from your family because you're not what what was wanted Mm -hmm. uh the orphans are 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 scooped up but the orphans like you could write an entire novel of just this section yeah it's the coolest thing of these you know street urchin kids that know that bad things are going to happen. some of them think hey maybe we'll become awesome and maybe we'll become mandalorians yeah but no, most of them, it's real bad for. Mm-hmm. And so they like have to dodge these nets. And, you know, there's people like going around with like dog catchers. Yeah, with the scoop nooses. up kids. Yeah. 
Uh, such an amazing, just amazing. And, and it's such a throwaway thing for Erickson. It's like this, that could be its own series of novels. For, and it's like kids. It's so interesting that it's like this city dynamic. And especially when it's like, oh, we have an unwanted child. It's like, but the law says you have to keep them till five. And everybody's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and so like the city dynamic where it's, you, they know that there can be a bunch of unwanted kids running around on the streets. And so they have people out catching them. It's yeah. Yeah. It's very, uh, they catch them and, and you don't know if you're going to get caught and used as a sacrifice. or abused or yeah, yeah. used as a sacrifice. Exactly. Or in her case taught how to, how to dance. You get a dance school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There Kevin Bacon's there. My parents didn't want me. And all I could do was dance. <laughs> uh, I'm going to live forever. <laughs> um, but Bidithal, you know, a uh, creepy old, uh, creepy old Bidithal. mage Bidithal. Yeah. As his buddy. I don't know if it's his buddy. I think it's just like, you know, mage from another town. Delat shows up who are, we are familiar with. Who is clearly on it's his own bit. mish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. I just want to make sure I'm not wrong about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, totally quick. Quick Ben's Ben. Ben's real name is like Edifon Delat. Yeah, or Edifon Delat. Like yeah. But it's so funny that he shows up and she's like dancing and she's like, I've never been good at dancing, but he was so hot. So hot. His I hands, danced better. I danced better and everybody knew that I was hungry for him. <laughs> That's right. I danced. I danced in such a, a manner that everybody was like, "Man, she won't it. She could get it." It was like, <laughs> it was like, I came here for a dance. I did not come here to see that. <laughs> <laughs> the the heat in this room turned up. Woo! It got hot in her. <laughs> and it was like everybody was like girl you gotta calm down we all <laughs> it's like I put it totally away imagine everybody's like and one and two and three and four and she's like mm. she's like crawling mm. on the ground <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much more intense she's like mm. yeah it's like that's not the choreography that's not all that's right, too much okay. eye contact that's too much eye contact <laughs> he's supposed to look at the shadow look at the shadow <laughs> oh, yeah, that is the cool thing too. Is that the dance you're doing is not even the to be watched. It's the shadow that you're creating. That's just a cool yeah. concept too. Yeah, I love that. Um, and then it's like so palpable that she like runs out of the room embarrassed. It's like yeah. so funny. It's just so funny. Do you I think mean, that she and Quick Ben got it on? No, I think the 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 conversation that she ended up having was. Yeah, if he didn't have this mission to like shut down Bidithal's terrible right. ways and he weren't like there to, you know, sort of like end the whole Cult. thing that you were trying yeah. to, that you were a part of, uh, yeah, he would have been down. But <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. So yeah. better like next time. Your loss. Sorry. Yeah. You wanted to destroy the cult more than he wanted uh, you know, make out with you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, interesting. Then what happens is uh, Cotillion shows up <laughs> as he often does. Uh, that's my, I'm going to do that every time Cotillion shows up. <laughs> um, I don't know why that's Cotillion's he does, thing. But... He does emerge in kind of like a goofy way. I just, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Like as he's talked about through like the first couple of books, there's like a, there's a weight to it. It's like, oh, Cotillion, yeah. and, and he's evil, and he's taking over Sorry, and she's evil now, and just killing people. And then every time he comes up, he's like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Let me tell you about all the ways I messed up in the past. And I got a favor for you to do for me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he's like, I saw your, I saw your dance. I thought it was hot. <laughs> Let me like, tell you, I would not have, you know. It would have been a mutual thing. I was there. <laughs> I was into it. You were clearly I saw your him. Dance. Nobody can deny what was happening at your dance. Um, <laughs> and uh, she, uh, yeah, so he, he confirms that like your dance was meant to make you a, a, a sick assassin. Guess who's the god of assassins now? This guy. Um, and that uh, she's like, well, what was going on with you and Kellen Ved? And oh, also, very cool payoff for the name Dancer. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. That's a cool payoff. Because uh -huh. I thought Dancer was just a kind of like cool. Like Prancer, Vixen, Comet. <laughs> Comet, Cupid, Cupid. All of them. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, it's cool that, you know, there's like this, there's, there's dance magic and shadow dancing and all that. That's cool. Um, and then he's like, Hey, I, I need your help. Uh, don't tell Pearl. I mean, you can, but don't please. I mean, you <laughs> can, I, but don't. I also like that. She's like, I only serve the empire. Kind of you. That's you. <laughs> oh, hoisted on my own petard. Uh. <laughs> um, and also, uh, he's like, <laughs> he's like, uh, she's like, yeah, but, um, what about the talents? He's like, all the talents are gone. What are you talking about? She's like, yes, they are all gone. No more we, talons. We both know that. <laughs> like, to be you're a god, true. <laughs> and you don't. Yeah, no, yes, definitely no more talons. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was awesome. He's like, but is what? that him being a? Is that him being oblivious, or is that him lying? That's the question. I don't know. I don't know. I me uh, originally thought, oh, she knows something he don't know, but then I was like, oh. But maybe he's like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, no, there's no more talents, remember? <laughs> we both know there's no more talents. I'm not sure. I, I'm not I've actually sure. never, I actually never even heard the word talent. <laughs> yeah. To Alan? You mean to Amber? That's <laughs> what you're talking about, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to Alan is to Amber's brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's stupid. That's good. <laughs> so dumb. So dumb. Um, then Pearl walks in. He's like, hey. I smell sorcery in here. Who was in here? She's like, I'm no a really one. good dancer. I'm a really, <laughs> really good, good dancer. dancer. Yeah, I was just doing some sick. I was bored and I was doing some sick dances in my room, you know, like I like. <laughs> I was like, dancing like no that? one was watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, um, well, knock it off. I smell the sorcery in here from a mile away. Huh? <laughs> Stop the dancing. Let the kids dance, Pearl. <laughs> uh, he literally says, if you, I know, don't, don't dance that hard. Cause it will draw unwanted attention. Yeah. The gods will notice your sick moves. And she's like, so cut it out. Uh, it doesn't sound probable. <laughs> uh, and they're like, well, let's go find, uh, let's go find, uh, Felicin Paran or Perrin. And uh, so, like, okay, how are we going to do that? Let's head to the the barracks. We're gonna uh, find uh, we're gonna find some folks that might know some things. And they run into a character named Maybe. To which I go, "Dash, darn it, we can't call the Mibe." Maybe I had anymore. the exact same thought. <laughs> I was like, "Oh well, great. <laughs> now we have to say it right, uh, so we don't confuse these characters." Uh, now we have to say the Mibe. <laughs> Um, and, and there's this weird little, I don't know what to make of the, the dude that could, <laughs> hides as a bale of hay. <laughs> just sweating and afraid. <laughs> also like, like, nobody sees me. I'm a bale of hay. And then <laughs> later Pearl's like, did you notice the dude who was a bale of hay? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, bro, you, like you making me sick by doing that. But also you fool the claw, bro. <laughs> you fool like, the claw. Instantly, it's like those idiots. <laughs> What I think is interesting is like the claw. Is he wearing like an insignia? How do they know he's a claw? I. It seems like over and like, over in these books, uh, they get the uh, sense like, oh, she's a red blade. She she isn't anymore, but you could tell just by the way she uses buckles. her walk. You yeah, know? yeah. You can tell by the way I use my claw. I used to be a claw. Um, <laughs> so uh, they're going in to look for Gessler and Stormy, and Stormy is asleep, and Pearl's like, hey. Wake up. And then he's like, Hulk smash. Grabs his ankle, lifts him up. Clearly Stormy is powerful. They're like as ascended, right? All these folks who went through the Warrens, they're like verging on ascension. They are ascended. But this is like the first time we've seen it be yeah. something yeah. physical. Superhuman strength. Throws him into the air. Uh... Interesting, I thought. And then, you know, later, uh, Lestara is like, did you notice the sword that was under his bed? That's the sword that uh, only um, Talon, Talon Amos have. That's, he shouldn't have that. Uh, but they're looking at, they're trying to find Pella. And there's this interesting dynamic where Lestara is like, you go in that room and you like, you know, 
woo them. <laughs> Pearl them is like, like you. Do you use your wiles. And she's like, yeah. my wiles. She's like, my wiles are, tell me the information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically everybody spills the beans. No problem. <laughs> Everybody's like truth walks in. Uh, guests on Stormy are like, oh yeah, we'll tell you everything we want to know. She's, she's we like, think oh she's yeah, still well, alive. where's Pella? And they're like, oh, I'll say. Yeah. 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 Um, or they, they're like, oh, she died. She and uh, Bowden died. They don't say where they were, the fact they were in a Warren, but they basically uh, spill everything and tell her like, yeah, she, we think she's dead. Uh, but then Pearl's like, I don't think she's dead. Let's go take a look at the boat that they were on, the Salonda. And they walk in and find all the stuff that we've seen numerous times now. Uh, basically, uh, <laughs> Carsa Orlong's uh, murder Anywhere? spree on the boat. Yeah. What, what I think is so funny is like, Pearl's like, what do you think? It's going to be like a horror movie, basically. And like, <laughs> she's like, it's going to be fine. Tarp, bunch of heads still alive. Blood still warm. Gross. <laughs> yeah. They're well, not going to yeah. find anything horrifying other than this. <laughs> Decapitated heads looking at me strangely. All right. Fun. <laughs> Super fun. Um, <clears throat> yes. So. Uh, they, you know, sense the magic there. They're checking out all the stuff. They see the autotoral dust. Um, but Lestara doesn't feel any sorcery, even though Pearl's like, there's so many sorceries up in here. There's like six sorceries up in here. Um, mm -hmm. And <laughs> then Pearl has this amazing upper observation where he's like, you know, if, if Felicity is still alive, she's either on one end of the continent or the other end of the continent or somewhere <laughs> in between. <laughs> It's like, oh, oh hmm. you're very perceptive. This is why you are the leader. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and then we have the payoff of the finger bones, which is, you know, Fiddler's like, we're putting all these bones in and uh, they're mad. R Renal and Gamut are mad. They're like, ah, you've been, you've been stealing from these graveyards? Don't do that. That's not nice. And he's if Adjunct Tavor finds out, she's going to be pissed. And then she shows up and she's like, good work, boys. Put the finger bones on right next to the scabbard so everybody has to wear them. Mm -hmm. She immediately recognizes how cool a plan this is. And the, and the scene en or the chapter ends with uh, Gamut saying Tavor is back. Tavor looks awesome. She's got a rekindled fire in her eyes. And uh, there are some new ships that just docked. A messenger runs in. It's like, new ships, huh? new ships. And mm -hmm. he's like, what ships are those? It's the Wiccans of Coltane's Crow Clan. Dun, dun, uh, dun. You know, again, this book just pulling out all the hits. Every name we love. And not, not right. Coltane himself, but the fact that we're seeing Coltane, we're about to meet Coltane's crew. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty sick. So not a lot of sort of huge developments in these chapters this week, but really juicy, interesting character stuff. I loved all the Corsa, uh, Carsa Orlong whittling in the woods stuff. Mm -hmm. I love all the insight into what the whirlwind is all about and the, the whirlwind goddess and sort of like the dynamic of all that stuff. I loved uh, Lestara Yill's backstory and their sort of first steps of a quest to, to track down Felicin and what, what, what that – but that's going to be, but not a lot of like huge moments, but just sort of like wonderful tapestry stuff. And and tiny little things like what's the deal with Cuddle saying that he killed mm. Lenostro? Yeah, yeah. What's the deal with those snakes? Are they a divers? There's like little, little yeah. threads to still sort of pick at here that I really enjoyed. And in general, like the end, both of this chapter, again, the folks in the community who did the chapter breakouts, thank you so much. Every time we get to the end of one of these, like the chapter break between seven and eight didn't have like a juicy, like, Ooh, a little teaser of what's coming next in such a way like that. This one is like, it's the Wiccans Coltane zone right. is like such a, ugh, I can't wait for next week. It feels like, you know, uh, next time on yeah, is, is, totally. is, is coming in. So thank you so much for this, these chapter breakdowns. They are so, such great selections. Agreed. Really appreciate it. Totally. So much fun. 
I'm really digging this novel. I'm really digging it. I'm having a Me great too. time with it. It feels like some such all the investment we've made is really paying off uh, as far as with characters and no, knowing the dynamics and all that stuff. Really good and stuff. I, and I do think that honestly, like having these conversations with you every week does give me an enjoyment of it because it makes me like slow down and think about things harder than I would have if I would just yeah. read through them on my own. So uh, I'm, you know, just the persistent. Thank you, Jeff, for inviting me Aww, to do this. I'm just loving it, loving it, loving it. And thank all of you. Uh, we do have some favorite quotes from these chapters. Uh, Lana, do you have yours queued up? If not, I can go. I have two. You should go first because I only grabbed one. I only snagged one. These were pretty uh, zippy chapters. I, I kept expecting to see more and I only grabbed one. I had a number that I didn't even write down. I, I, I love the pros in these uh, chapters, but I, I will say one of my favorites is this interaction between um, uh, Felicity and the Younger and uh, and Heboric when they're talking about the writing of the poetry. And uh, Felicity says, talking about her mother, she says she has, it seems, rediscovered her hunger for writing poetry. The tattooed ex-priest grunted, I thought it was a love, not a hunger. You are not a poet, she said. I love that. Mm. She, mm. she loves writing poetry. It's not that she has to. Well, you're clearly not a poet then, are you? If yeah. you don't have to do it, you don't get it. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I thought that was so good. Uh, mine is, uh, from, uh, Heberic thinking it's like right at the very beginning of chapter seven. Um, and Heberic just getting into the mind of Heberic again. No life's path is bloodless. Spill mm. that of those blocking your path. Spill your own. Struggle on. Wade the growing torrent with all the frenzy that is the brutal unveiling of self-preservation. The macabre dance and the tugging currents held no artistry, and to pretend otherwise was to sink into delusion. So good. No path is bloodless. Ah, oh, it's so good. So good. Um, here is uh, uh, I, I love I love this is just a single sentence. Um, I don't even remember who says it. I like how we're like our favorite sentences that we still quantify it as well. This one's literally just one. Yeah, this one, I know. Uh, it's grown in the telling, as, as one might say. Um, all right, this is a, a single sentence that I just find beautiful. The future can ever promise but one thing and one thing only surprises. Mm. Um. That's all you know for sure is going to happen, is not something you would ever expect. Yeah. I love it. Beautiful stuff. Love it. Uh, folks, we are so grateful that you're watching, that you're interacting, that you're commenting. We appreciate it so much. Uh, if you'd like to suggest topics for our uh, non-spoiler section at the beginning of the show, we'd be grateful for that as well. You can post them in our Discord, which is 5x5DLC on Discord in the book club uh, thread there. Or you can email us DLC feedback at gmail.com is where you do that. We love hearing from you. We love your participation. It's a delight. Hope uh, you have a wonderful holiday. We'll be back next week with three chapters. Very exciting. Uh, but in the meantime, have a wonderful, wonderful holiday, however you celebrate. We'll see you next time. When the world stood dark. But you're doing it with the